Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about blood meal. So I'm doing the video on bone meal and the blood meal on the same day because they kind of go hand in hand. They're generally applied together or as a mix. And that is because when you combine blood meal and bone meal together, you get a complete nutrient profile of the NPKs and then some obviously micronutrients involved such as calcium, iron, that sort of thing. So that is why we're doing them together. But let's talk about what makes blood meal valuable or not valuable in your garden, for your houseplants, whatever the case is, and situations in which you should or should not apply blood meal to your plants. So blood meal is, and bone meal, is not vegan, vegetarian friendly whatsoever, it is literally dried blood from the slaughterhouses um, when there's meat slaughtered. So kind of cool that we're using all parts of the animal, sort of disgusting when you think about it, uh, in and of itself, but it is really high in nitrogen um, with some phosphorus, and then obviously there's iron in there as well. So first off, let's look at what the studies say about the iron in the blood mill. There isn't a ton of research done on this product in particular, and I find that when it comes to blood mills, bone mills, grass, Anything that is just generic and there's not money behind it, like if it's not miracle Grow mix or if it's not pro-mix mix or if it's not proprietary blends of microbes, there's not a lot of funding for it. And so therefore the lack of subsidies or the lack of um, money behind it because there's no company behind it results in really poor literature about it. I guess that's a reason why you know, Doritos does so much better than like cucumbers. Obviously there's no cucumber salesman out there um, talking about the benefits of eating endless amounts of cucumbers or Doritos because there's no money there. So with that being said, um, there is some research out there that helps us understand the, the benefits of the product or the maybe issues with the product, but not a ton. And one of those things that was studied was specifically the iron in the blood meal itself. So the iron um, comes from, from the hemoglobin, which contains iron. So the availability of the iron is increased the longer the blood meal spends in the soil profile. And so the uh, thought process behind this is it's just progressive degradation of the hemoglobin inside of this kind of dried powder that is applied. And so it's what we call successive chelation, um, something really similar that happens when it comes to like rock dust, but in a little bit more of an expedited fashion when it comes to the blood meal in and of itself. So I did an entire video on the benefits of iron in the 17 essential nutrients playlist. So go check that out if you wanna learn more about specifically what iron does for plants, but it is beneficial to have both for houseplants and then obviously for fruits and veggies or flowers as well and perennials and that sort of thing. So with that being said, the typical way to apply or the best way to apply a blood meal would be directly root place um, or just above the rhizosphere, allowing gravity to bring it down into the, the natural vicinity of the plant. Because uh, blood meal does have nitrogen in it and nitrogen is water soluble, it does leach, but it also volatilizes. So it gases off as well as moves with water through the system. And so due to that factor, we want to make sure that we have it rhizosphere placed under a certain layer of soil. Um, and then for the iron, if that's root placed, it's always um, in our better interest. Now I was reading not studies, but just commentary, like gardening how-to blog posts. And they were saying that excessive application of dried blood meal can cause burning. And I don't, like when it comes to organic substances, there should be no burning unless there's really high salt content. So I'm not sure if dried 
blood has really high salt or not. There's nothing I can find in the literature pointing to salinity, but it was a really common theme I was seeing throughout all these blog posts saying, if you apply too much, you're gonna burn your plants. And so I've never personally used blood meal. I'm a super basic person when it comes to uh, plant nutrients and garden for both gardening and house plants and that's just because I already know what's in the soil and I already know what the plants are capable of doing on their own without these really fancy expensive products added in so if anyone has had experience with burning please let me know in the comments down below because that would reference some sort of salinity which I mean it would make sense to me kind of because we're human and we need salts to function and so with that being said it would make sense that there'd be some salinity there but i just don't know how much so that is something that maybe you want to keep in mind if you're choosing to use a blood meal in your house plant or your your garden situation now the one thing that i did find a little concerning is it does throw your carbon to nitrogen balance off so it is really high in nitrogen really low in carbon and so this is maybe where um, the bone blood meal mixed together would be the better case but that carbon to nitrogen ratio being thrown off um, and really increasing the nitrogen obviously can affect your microbial communities for example and just natural soil functions so that is something to keep in mind if you're going to add blood meal you're going to want to use a healthy dose of organic material with it as well whether that be leaf mold compost manures whatever the case is it's not a complete fertilizer and i also was reading it can cause unwanted visitors so uh blood meal obviously smells like blood and in particular it smells like animal blood so that can mean raccoons rats dogs cats all may be attracted to the area that this is put and that's just another reason why you're going to want to dig it in and place it rises to your place rather than having it um, just really nilly floating around um, on top of the soil surface because it's less than ideal to have critters in our gardens yeah that's all i have for you guys today on the blood meal i would like iron isn't something that's typically deficient in the soil um it is really high nitrogen so and it's really low phosphorus and potassium so you may notice lots of foliage growth and not a lot of fruit flower development meaning if you're going for like a vegetative plant or if you're going for house plants, then using a blood meal is going to be valuable because it's gonna be very high in foliage content. But if you are, are doing like tomatoes, peppers, um, things that aren't necessarily greenery, that's something that you may wanna consider and you may wanna pull back on using blood meal. Um, if you're a container gardener, house plant gardener, um, again, that's gonna be something where you're gonna to wanna to consider blood meal because obviously iron, isn't going to be as prolific in a soilless medium so just something to keep in mind there as well so that's all i have for you guys today on blood meal if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below if you use blood meal and please do let me know if you've noticed the burning before as well i'll talk to you guys next time bye